bodies flying everywhere. Mark Few knows this is a big game. And the number two ranked team in the country with the five point lead. Steve Weissman in studio coming up on the Land Rover Halftime Report. Top five teams continue to tumble. What Virginia did to Duke for the first time in 11 years and how that affects the projected top seeds in the tournament. Jay Williams, Bruce Pearl, you don't want to miss what they have to say. Back to Provo, David Mark. All right, Steve, we'll look forward to that. Gonzaga, second-ranked team in the country as of now, leading here in Provo, 30-25 to 25 on senior night for the Cougars. There were a lot of emotions. Five seniors, including three starters, Davey Zilstra and Craig Cusick. And all three with very different stories, different careers here at BYU, but all three have meant a lot to this Cougars program. Well, Brandon Davies was disciplined so publicly around the country, and he decided to stay at BYU. The easy thing would have been to transfer, but I admire his guts for staying here at BYU, graduating from BYU, finishing his career here at BYU. That takes courage, in my view. Yeah, that, of course, two years ago on the Jimmer Fredette BYU Cougars. That magical year for BYU. A couple seasons ago, Carlino runner. What a shot by Matt Carlino. Over a limit. Well played. Three-point game again. Just over three minutes to go, first half. Stingy zone. Bell three, short, loose ball. Cusick lost it out of bounds. So looking to run, lost the chance for the possession. Watch Carlino as he goes up, and he uses the glass right there. That's why he's successful. He reads the big defender coming, and he takes it off the glass. That's how you beat a shot blocker. Lino's got five. Gonzaga got a break and got the ball back. Arm from the corner. That three no good. So the shot's not going down now for Gonzaga. And Gonzaga settling for those contested threes. That's exactly what the BYU zone is designed to do. Gonzaga, how about this in the first half? They are now three of 15 from three-point range. Carlino again gets his own miss. One point game. Carlino's playing well. Davies is playing well. Haas is playing well. That's the one, two, three punch for the win for BYU. Those three have to play well. A Linux swarm knocked away. Hustle play by Hart to jump on the loose ball, but the arrow favors BYU. So the Cougars are going to get this ball back. He is completely surrounded. And when you bring the ball down around four white jerseys, that's what's going to happen. His greatest advantage is keep the ball above your head, have vision, and pass. That's usually what Olenek does. Zaga is led by as many as nine. BYU has not led yet in this game. And they still have it. Rebound Olenek. You can't fall in love with the jump shot. You gotta stay with your big guys and get them touches inside. And again, another possession where just about everything on the perimeter for the Zags. Angos finds Barm, and he's fouled shooting a three. So that was a pretty heads up play by Drew Barm. He knew the big man was flying out there. He'll go to the free throw line. Watch the shot fake. And then just waits for contact, invites contact. And that was a good play by the transfer from Memphis, who has already graduated and yet still has another year of eligibility left. He graduated in a hurry at Memphis. So he'll be a player this year and next. The officials come into the monitor. And presumably checking to see whether that was a two or a three attempt. We'll see if we can tell whether his foot was behind the line. You know, what's interesting about this play is that Drew Barham, obviously known as a three-point shooting threat, 
and the Saturday report says, challenge every shot, challenge every shot. And it gets in your head, and sometimes you're a little bit over-aggressive. Clearly a three-point attempt. And so they take a quick look at it, confirm it's three free throws coming up for Drew Barham. Elias Harris on the bench for the Zags. He went out, Mark, with two personal fouls, and things changed for Gonzaga. They have not played as well without Harris. Yeah, the focus has gone clearly to the perimeter and away from the paint. Dower also has the foul, so just the one big man in for Gonzaga has changed their offense. Two more free throws coming for Barham. And a high-low game that you've been talking about, that has been unavailable. The, the, the way that Gonzaga's big men play together but at the moment only one true big on the floor Stockton will come in for Pangos it's been a struggle for Kevin Pangos who has played at a very high level Barm made them all smart play paid off big time so on a night where lots are struggling at the free throw line Barm made three in a row there Four-point lead for Gonzaga. Hawes had it poked away momentarily, got it back. And he makes a smart play, threw the ball up, draws a foul. So just almost exactly what Barham did, Tyler Hawes does on this end. It's another scouting report foul. No patience defensively. You go for the first ball fake. Next thing you know, Tyler Hawes is getting his rhythm at the free throw line. Just about halfway to his season average. Ozu missed two free throws already. That is a rare occurrence. Makes this one. He's a fun kid to talk to. Very, very competitive. He's been consistent. He's a versatile guy because offensively he's had layers to his game. Of course, he had the one point against Gary Bell Jr. when they played against Spokane. That is not the case tonight in Provo. Much different night for Haas and a much different game for BYU. Well, this thing was over in the first half in Spokane. It's not over tonight by a long shot. One minute to go. Barham three, and he came up way short. And Olenek again gets no touch in the half court. Carlino down the lane. Carlino short himself. Fight for the loose ball, and Ian Harwood, who just came in the game, grabs it away. Here's Zilstra off on the three. Stockton knocked to the ground. He's fouled. A rough and tumble here in Provo. David Stockton will be the free throw shooter. Double bonus for Gonzaga. One of the questions about BYU was would they stand up and fight? Would they be physical in this game? This is not a team known for being necessarily physically tough in the West Coast Conference. But, man, they have come out physically tough here tonight. Well, Stockton, who had the beautiful end-to-end -end play earlier this half, two free throws for him. Makes the first, the son of the all-time Gonzaga great, John Stockton, who is such a beloved figure in this state for all his years with the Utah Jazz. I'm sure some mixed feelings about David here in the building tonight. Well, pretty good basketball family, brother Houston. Plays for the Grizzlies of the University of Montana. Brother Michael plays at Westminster College. One more free throw for Stockton. And maybe not mixed feelings based on the crowd's reaction to Stockton at the line. Tough kid, though, David Stockton. Made them both. Mark View wants a timeout. Just a three-second difference between game clock and shot clock. We'll take a quick timeout ourselves. Gonzaga, second-ranked team of the country, leads 35-31. Had a nice long flight this morning from St. Louis to Salt Lake City. It's a nice act. Caught up on oh, some nice college act. hoops. BYU with the ball. There is that difference. Game clock, shot clock. Cougars acting like they're essentially holding for what they hope will be the final look. It's Carlino against Stockton. That's the matchup here. Watch for Tyler Hawes coming off screen. Number three in the corner. Brandon Davies with the on-ball screen for Carlino. 
Now he'll set it and slips to the basket. Olenek helped out. The shot clock might have gone off. No whistle, though, and the horn will sound. The shot didn't go down. The heave from Stockton wouldn't have counted. It is halftime here in Provo. You can tell it's a big night for the Zags, the way Mark Few has reacted all throughout this first half. All right, halftime score. Zags lead 35-31. Steve Weissman, Bruce Pearl, Jay Williams coming up now with our Land Rover halftime report. All right, Dave, this is the Land Rover Halftime Report, and we begin... Jay Williams, Coach Bruce <laughs> Pearl, Steve Wiseman on the Land Rover Halftime Report. All right, so another top five team goes down this week. We already saw Indiana. We already saw Michigan. Coach, what do you take from this one? Uh, this was not an upset. This is a Virginia team that has not lost on their home floor all season long. They've already beaten North Carolina. They've already beaten NC State. Uh, this is not a surprise. They controlled the tempo. They were physical. They had a guy named Joe Harris, who might be the best player in the ACC. He is in constant motion. You've got to stay attached to him here, Rashid Suleiman. You can't go th third man through. Mike Toby picks him off. There is no help. He's got an old school game, a physical game, making the tough two. Watch Joe Harris move off the ball to the back side. Comes off the down screen again. Rasheed, hip pocket. You can't go third man through. He gives him some space. He can make the open three-point shot. You know, Joe Harris is really good. He's probably the ACC player of the year between him and Shane Larkin. And when you look at this Duke basketball team, you have to question their strength is shooting the three and getting the ball down low to Mason Plumley. Mason Plumley cannot be in an operating position when he's posting up 15 feet outside the basket. If I'm trying to gain post position on a coach, I have to get low to the ground and explode into his hips. You, Mason Plumley is trying to catch the ball standing straight up. And then every time they got it to him, they double teamed him, he kicked it out, Can and I they never reposted exactly. Jay. They never got him back inside where he had an advantage on the inside. He only got like seven shots. All right, so let's see how this affects the top seeds overall Joe Lenardi's bracket right now. Yesterday, we saw Michigan losing, so that put Kansas in the top four overall seeds. And today, well, we see a loss for Duke, and they're out. Now, Gonzaga has moved into one of the top four spots, as well as Indiana, Kansas. And look at Miami down there. They're sneaking in now. By the way, if Miami loses at Duke, look for a team like Georgetown to maybe yeah. come in and replace them as the number one seed as well. Revolving door, or nonstop. Duke moving back or Duke in. moving back in. <laughs> Who knows? It's constantly changing because there's upsets almost every single night in college basketball. That's now. why I have four question marks. Who are your number one seeds? Four question marks. We'll find out in two weeks. 19 top five teams go down to unranked teams so far this season. A and, record. And, and we could see Gonzaga go down. They're only up four right yeah. now on BYU. No what question. stood out to you so far in the first half? Well, the fact that Gonzaga only made three three-point baskets. Gonzaga needs to shoot the basketball well to win this basketball game. Why? Because BYU plays a variety of zones. They make you shoot the ball from per perimeter. And I don't like the fact that Gonzaga is not finding Kelly Olynyk in spots to score against this zone. I would like for the Zags to put Olynyk at the back of the zone. Yes, near the right? basket. Maybe flash, flash a guard mm -hmm. across it. it I, they can't get him the ball. So flash a guard across, let a guard catch the ball in the middle and make a play and stop settling for threes. The only Start guy, attacking the rim. The only guy making threes for him is Gary Bell. Exactly. Now, Gary Bell's not their best three-point shooter, but he's made all three of the three-point shots. He's a 37% th shooter. He's keep, he got the, obviously, Gonzaga into a good start yeah they were going for number one seed and